question that we have to ask ourselves almost right out of the gate is going to be what is an ACI? So if we look at it from the perspective of comparing it to networking, ACI is going to be defined as a way of using software-defined networking constructs to provide network functionality in a fabric of devices. Now we have to note that this fabric of devices can take many forms. I can have pods, I can have multi-pods, multi-sites. I don't want to con confuse it right now. I'm going to define first of all what a fabric is because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to work through this definition backwards. And I'm going to begin by first focusing on devices and fabric. And whenever we implement any terminology, we want to make certain that we can compare it to something that we probably already know about. And what I want to do is I want to look at the definition of the term fabric because it can mean many things. It's like virtual. When we start looking at applying virtual to anything, I can have virtual machines, I can have virtual switches, I can have all of these components. But at the end of the day, we have to recognize that this is just a name, something that we've assigned arbitrarily to a particular idea or construct. Now, if I look at fabric from the purpose or from the perspective of the NXOS, the Nexus operating system, there are a number of fabrics that can we we can actually do a comparison to. And my favorite is the idea of fabric path. Now, fabric path was implemented as a solution to be able to eliminate the necessity for needing spanning tree. It's Cisco's, it's Cisco's version of the industry standard mechanism called TRIL, Transparent Interconnection of Lots of Links. And at the end of the day, it really didn't gain, gain anywhere near as much traction as Cisco had hoped. So we're finding it falling out of vogue, but it still was a very interesting concept because Fabric Path is basically a fabric comprised of links. Now, let me illustrate what I'm talking about here. Fabric Path employs what we call a cloth design. Now, anytime you see, hear me use the word cloth, I'm actually making reference to what is going to be normally called a leaf spine design. Now, it's not an abbreviation. It actually is a man's name. The man who, who created this, was his name was Charles Kloss. He was a telephony engineer, and what he did is he postulated a mechanism to be able to prevent head-of-line blocking, i.e., I have to wait for the guy who placed a call before me to finish before I can communicate to someone else. He actually created what is also known as a crossbar fabric, of which... We use leaves and spines, and we do the exact same thing in this idea of fabric path. So if I were to look at this concept, what i do is I would have one or more spine devices. And then what I do is I take those spine devices, I can connect those to one or more leaf devices. Now, when we do this, what ends up happening is, is that we create a scenario whereby leaves are only connected to spines, and spines are only connected to leaves. Leaves are never connected to one another. Spines are never connected to one another other than in some specialized corner case scenarios that we will talk about later. Now in this design, all I would do is, let's say I'll take spine one and spine two, and I will connect them to leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. And the thing that we need to understand is, is the spines will be connected to every leaf, like so. And what we end up doing is, is through the employment of this creation of a fabric. So what I'm going to do now is by setting this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fabric. And in that fabric, what's going to end up happening is, is that fabric is really, you know what, let me, let me change the way that I did this. That fabric is actually going to run between the interfaces. And what's going to end up happening is I'm going to create a environment where basically at the end of the day I'm going to be performing routing 
to send layer two information. Now, when we start looking at the way that we create this, what we're doing is we're creating a fabric path cloud. But what will happen here is, is that I can take hosts. Let's say, actually, we don't even say host. We'll say a classic Ethernet infrastructure. So a normal, what we call classic Ethernet set of VLANs and switches, these would all run here. And what would end up happening is, is this might be campus one, campus two and campus three and what I may have is I may have a host residing here and this host may be in VLAN 100 and I may have a host residing here and this host may be in VLAN 100 and host one may need to be able to communicate to host two as if they were layer two adjacent. Now what will end up happening is is that as long as this cloud recognizes the VLAN that these hosts share, for instance, VLAN 100, what's going to end up happening is, is the system will allow that traffic to be sent across the cloud. So what will end up happening is, is I'll pick a spine switch and then I'll just pick this one arbitrarily and then what I'll do is I'll hairpin my data down and I'll be able to reach my particular destination. Now this concept is very valid and very solid but the problem was is it's the deployment that Cisco implemented is at the end of the day Cisco proprietary and a lot of people really did not or opted not to buy into it but at the end of the day it's still a valid solution and it does create a fabric but what I want you to note here is is that it created a fabric of links so if I come in here and I let's go ahead and I'll pick a, a highlighter here we'll just use um, gray and what happens here is, is that at the end of the day, it's these links that are actually being created or turned into a fabric. When I look at the idea of managing these components, keep in mind that every one of these devices is going to have its own management zero interface. Every device is going to have its own management zero interface. So I'll just say M0. M0 and M0. Now what that implies is is that even though I have a unified fabric, this fabric only exists for the purposes of data. For the purposes of control, implementation, and management, I still have five separate configuration planes. So five configuration planes. And what that means is, is that I have to log in to each one of these devices. So that means S1 is configured separate from S2. S1 and S2 are connected to L1, L2, and L3 in my analogy. And each one of these are configured differently. All for the sole and express purpose of being able to create a fabric that can run between them in such a fashion that they're going to be able to communicate with one another or translate information with one another. But the problem here is, like I said, if I have 100 devices connected like this, then I have 100 points of management. So the idea was to be able to take this concept, and what we want to do is we want to create a fabric. But what we want to do now is we don't just want a transport fabric for the purposes of sending information, what we actually want to create is we want to create a fabric of nodes in such a fashion that each of these nodes could be managed as one entity. So the goal here is, is I want to have one point of management, irregardless of how many devices that I have in my fabric. Now this takes us to devices because inside of this infrastructure first of all if I'm doing fabric path I have to do this on a device that actually understands fabric path. That means that I can do things like this on the NXOS operating system. Fabric path is supported on the N 5k the 5600s it's supported on the N 7k just to name the devices that we could probably run into most commonly. However, whenever we start looking at this fabric of nodes that we're trying to implement here, 
which is going to be what actually makes up the application centric infrastructure, we have to understand that we're restricted to 9Ks. The 9K devices are going to be comprised of particular models. Now, I'm not going to get into a sales pitch here. I don't want to talk about what particular model, what the benefits are, you can look at the Cisco material and you can actually figure that out on your own without much help at all. In fact, sales is really good about disseminating that information. What I'm focusing on is the fact that these devices are going to be broke up into two categories specifically. I'm going to have devices that are going to contain a special ASIC. So when we say ASIC, we're talking about application-specific integrated circuit. So that's the silicone that allows a device to perform its function. And Cisco's all about having specialized ASICs to be able to afford us everything from rapid convergence to very, very high-speed forwarding capability. And the first that we're going to look at is going to be an ASC. That stands for an application spine engine. So if it's a 9K that has an ASC installed in it, whether it's going to be version of a second gen or a third gen ASC ASIC, that's going to determine its role and its function. The other is going to be an ALE, an application leaf engine. And anything that has an application leaf engine is going to be used as a leaf. Now, traditionally, leaves are situated closer to our users and I'm going to use the term endpoints for this because honestly it really doesn't matter to the fabric but the idea here is is the fabrics are going to be comprised of nodes and what we're going to find is is that we will connect endpoints to our fabric typically at leaf switches. In fact if we look at a three-tier data center design a lot of times we find ourselves connecting at the core. Well ordinarily that's the way we do things because that particular network is optimized for what we refer to as north-south traffic. When we start entering into this idea of fabric and this cloth architecture, what we're doing is we're actually looking at being able to support the capability of being able to efficiently sending, send traffic east-west, especially if we take into account that a lot of this actually happens in virtual switches that are actually going to be instantiated inside of hypervisors. So we've got a lot of stuff that we've got to talk about, and it's very, very hard to find a common starting point. So in my p opinion, the best place to start is going to be at work coming up with a functional and working definition for this fabric of nodes that we're going to be building. And I'm going to keep everything defined within the confines of the devices that we have, which means I'm going to build everything from the perspective of one spine and two leaves. So in that implementation, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create an infrastructure that's going to be comprised of a spine and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a single leaf and a second leaf. And remember we said this is a class architecture. So when we start looking at this what we're doing is we're actually going to be first of all defining the physical components that make up this fabric of nodes. So obviously the 9Ks we're going to be dealing with. And if this is a spine, obviously it's got to have a application spine engine. The leaves obviously have to have application leaf engines. Now there is a device, for instance, the one that I have, the spine, we, it's called a baby spine. It actually has a ALE and an ASE in it, but it's not something that you would ordinarily use for even a mid-size environment, but it makes a great lab utility. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to immediately connect these devices to one another using a QSFP plus 40 gigabit active optical cable that is going to allow these devices to ultimately discover one another and create my fabric. Now, in doing so, all I've done is basically just connected the leaves to the spine. Remember, leaves don't connect to other leaves. However, I have to be concerned with the next part of this, which is going to be the idea of being able to manage all of these devices. Remember I said we're going to do this as if they were one entity. So in looking at this I need to define what it is I'm going to use to control all of these devices and that's what we call the APIC, the Application Profile Infrastructure Controller, which is just some software running on a Cisco C220 M4 blade server. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that blade server, I'm sorry, excuse me, it's a chassis server, it's a rack mount server, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the network card in that server, which is traditionally a 12 
25 VIC card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one 10 gig connection and I'm going to connect it to this leaf. And then I'm going to take one 10 gig connection and I'm going to connect it to this leaf. That's all I'm basically going to do. Because what's going to end up happening in this scenario is, is this APIC, this Application Infrastructure Controller, is going to be allowed or give me the capability of being able to, one, discover all of the devices that I have in this fabric. And then, two, what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to be able to actually configure all devices that I've discovered. So ultimately what's going to end up happening here is this. And this is how this differs from the fabrics that we've created in the past. Because notice right here, and this is why I went back and did it, when we look at this idea of the fabric path configuration, yes, it's a cloth design, but the, the goal or the important thing to understand is, is the fact that the devices that are part of the fabric are separate devices. So the magic of the ACI the magic of the application citric infrastructure is its ability of not only being able to create a fabric of leaves, I'm sorry, a fabric of links, but it also creates a fabric of nodes. So ultimately what's going to end up happening here is, is just like in the previous example, let me pick a lighter blue, just like in the previous example, I'm going to be building a cloud, a fabric of devices, but that cloud is actually going to include the nodes themselves. So in this instance, everything is inside that cloud architecture, the switches themselves. And what will end up happening is, is that each one of these devices is going to can actually surrender its configuration capabilities to this APIC. So this device right here, the application profile infrastructure controller is then going to be the equivalent and if I had to actually cite this it would be a single management interface or management plane that I'm going to use to configure every device that is part of the fabric that I create. And I can have more than one fabric, i.e. I can create multiple pods inside of the same fabric and manage them differently. And there are lots of different things that I can actually employ. Well, then the immediate question here is, is well, everybody says, well, what about failure? What if I lose that, that APIC? Well, the APIC that I have can actually operate in clusters. So what will end up happening is, is that ordinarily in a production environment, I would want to have at minimum three APICs. Now that's making an implication here because if I have three APICs, the most that this APIC can manage, these three APICs working together, will actually represent or replicate their databases between themselves, runtime information, configuration information, accessibility information, via a process called sharding. So they become a highly available cluster, and then I can survive a single failure. But in the idea of definition, this APIC, these three APICs working together, can actually maintain the infrastructure for six spine switches, max and up to 20 leaf switches now what if I want to go beyond that well actually no it's not 20 it's 80 excuse me 80 leaf switches well if I want to go beyond that well first of all I have to recognize that I have an upper limit I have a hard limit I cannot go beyond six spines however I do have the capability of being able to go up to 200 leaf switches now, if I do that, what ends up happening is, is this sharding concept is not enough. I need more devices. So in this scenario, what I would employ is I would actually employ five APICs to be able to support this many devices. But the key element here is, is that addresses the idea of what if I lose the control component. The other thing that you also need to understand is, is that the APIC is not the control plane. The APIC is going to be the way that I can configure the control planes. Remember, each one of these devices still has its own ASICs configured in it. And inside of that ASIC is where I have all of my information. It's just that information is disseminated from the application profile infrastructure controller. So it runs natively. At the end of the day, the APICs could burn down 
and I still have the capability of being able to send information through this fabric that I just described and illustrated. And remember, it's comprised of 9Ks. It's comprised of, aptic, of active optical connections and it's going to also be comprised of these APICs, these application profile infrastructure controllers. So what ends up happening here is, is now I actually have created a single fabric called the ACI fabric, the application centric infrastructure fabric that I can manage from a single point of configuration. I always tell students all the time that this is very, very similar to the UCS, the Unified Computing System. The Unified Computing System is a construct whereby I use objects to manage configurations using graphical tools. And inside of the ACI, I will use JavaScript object notation defined objects to configure all of these devices and also to create any logical constructs that are part of these devices. As an example, if I logged into a 5K or a 7, I'm sorry, a 7K, I could actually create a virtual device context, which allows me to be able to create a virtual switch. Inside of the confines of the ACI or the APIC configurations, I can create the equivalent of subdividing these devices for multi-tenancy environments by creating a tenant. So after a fashion, a tenant is very similar to a VDC. They're different, but if I wanted to look at it from a point of comparison, this is exactly what I describe it as. Tenants are like virtual switches. And the moment I create a virtual switch, it's important to understand I'm going to have a layer 2 construct and a layer 3 construct in the form of an Ethernet protocol stack and a IP or a logical or routing protocol stack. So we'll look at this a little bit further. What I want you guys to do, if you need to repeat this video and go through it, uh, I would highly recommend that. But once that's done and you've got this concept in mind, what we want to do is we want to actually talk a little bit more about how we would go through and build a fabric. And the best way that we're going to be able to do that is going to actually build one. I'll see you guys in that video. Till then, I'm Terry Vinson, and I'd like to thank you for learning Data Center with me.